ficus, a strangler's life, or a colonial life. Back then, the bay, a fired field, an oaked and mangroved selvage, a threshold and a half, a sacred swamp, a river that spoke with its mouth full of eels, a beach, a feast, a forest of seasons, a farm put under cultivations by the wisdom the women and the men learned here, a garden that grew boys into men and time into a library of light. Back then, when it fell from the sky and grew its people strong, long centuries before the West had dreamed of fields of wheat, the bay was already a garden which had hardly heard of figs. But come here in 200 years and fig, maybe all the bay will have to say. The people who landed here in this old and husbanded world and called it new came from copses, from hedgerows and woods and fall and winter and spring. And wanting shade for summer, they found it under figs and brought them south to parasol the shore. And like all of us to whom a chance and a place are given, the figs wanted more. Everything would almost do the trick. They wanted from the start to fell the fallen sky and rain a forest down. And up along the creek that watered this garden, and waters it still, two figs of different temper, two figs of foreign tongue, one fig that loves the sandstone, one fig that loves the rain, two figs have talked their way into a tale that's ages old and told on the pages of a paper bark that may have stood here telling when the Enlightenment, in all its fettered and parvenu pomp, dropped anchor in the bay. Twenty-five years ago or so, two figs fell out of heaven's mouth or ass, and moved into the upper stories of the telling tree and slowly made a garden there, a plot in which, if they survive her, the landlady dies. Through all these years and bats and suns and storms, two figs sat in a Melaleuca attic and ate the sky they came in with. They lived on memes and code and IOUs and later sent down abseiling roots and when they touched the earth began to grow. Two figs since then have eaten their host out of house and disheveled antique home. But see how even in her ending she begins again. She puts out bloom and leaf and she'll go on trying to put on years until they stop her and then she won't. We call her the host, but what choice did she have? What choice the first gardeners here? What choice in the end, any of us, but the end, and how we get there? History arrives with death in its pocket. Sooner or later it shows, and who we are is how we make our living worthy while we wait of what we're dealt. In between the years, the days, the life we get may not always be our own. And to give life, giving life, the height of love is the height of this hybrid canopy in which the end, though still far off, is written. A beautiful death, a metamorphosis in three tongues lost on each other all at once. And the figs, who can blame them? Such wanton, patient, longing for life, such lust and pluck, and what a wild way to come to be. Read the way a garden reads, looked at outside time and inside place, there's nothing doing here but poetry, that slow green fire in which even death is dying to begin again.